So welcome to the class on research questions. Today, what we're going to be talking about are a few different things, and I'm going to turn my video off here. Essentially, we're going to be going over everything you need to know about making a research question. So what the purpose of a research question is, how to actually format it, um, and then go over what the do's and don'ts are around making a research question. And then we have a short activity um, at the end as well to kind of get you thinking about what makes a low quality research question and a high quality research question. So first we'll start off with the actual making of your research question. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, you'll see here, and you might remember from previous classes, uh, this is all part of the research process. So the research process is a circular or iterative process. Uh, you can start in any particular place on here and the process can go either forwards or backwards. So right now, um, we are trying to focus our research so that we actually have a purpose for what we're looking for. And the three major ways that people generally make a research question are mind mapping or concept mapping, using your source as a guide, or doing background research. And not to say these are the only ways you can create a research question, these are just the three most common, and you can also use these in combination with each other if you find one isn't getting you where you need to go. So concept mapping, um, you may have done this before with other classes or other assignments, but essentially it's just taking a major concept. So the picture on here shows water and you sit down and you break down the, the concept into its various parts. Um, so the example here is showing that water, we're thinking about it in terms of chemistry and then chemical properties, or if we want to think about it in the area of physics, We've got all of those different things on that side or biology. So what are the different pieces that make up a large concept? So this is really good for if you have like an idea, just like one idea, and you want to see what it breaks down to um, in order to find maybe a more specific topic. So you're going from broad to more specific. Another way to make your research question is to use your source as a guide. And this is one of the more common ways that students will make their research question. So essentially, what you're doing is you're using whatever it is you're reading and you're letting it guide you towards what you might want to write about. So in particular, um, figuring out what specific portion or which source you're going to use as the base. So in your case, it may be your textbook, the Broadview Anthology. Perhaps it's something else. Maybe it's an article that you read uh, somewhere else. So what is it you're actually going to be reading in order to help you form this question? The first thing you want to do after you've picked that source is you want to read it. So read it through read it well, and then you're going to take a break just to give yourself a chance to reflect and give your brain a tiny bit of a break before you go to read it again. So when you read it again, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be actively um, in the, involved in the process. So as you read, you're going to write down any questions that might come to mind or other topics that you think of as you're reading your source a second time. And then after that, um, you can figure out whether maybe one of those questions is something that you want to write about, or maybe you take a topic, a general topic, and you combine it with a concept map in order to help you break down that topic further. The third way uh, that you can create a research question is just by doing background research. So on the screen here, we've got some different places to look uh, to help you do that background research. So Wikipedia or any other online encyclopedias like the Canadian Encyclopedia, uh, as many people have probably said to you, 
Uh, Wikipedia is not a thing that you want to be using to actually write the text of your paper, but it's really, really great in terms of figuring out or learning about a topic that you don't know anything about beforehand. Another way to help you do background research is to find open access journals. So those are journals where um, they're freely available. There's no paywall or anything um, or a database that's about a certain subject. Uh, we have a bunch of those in the library resources, and there is also many available online. Uh, books or ebooks about your topic. Uh, again, if you're looking for general summaries, try a kid's book. Um, they're really, really great for giving you like the overarching view about a topic because uh, they're written for that specific audience. Uh, paper and magazine articles. So if your uh, topic, the thing that you're thinking of is something that's timely or something that you may have heard of in the news currently or in the past, you may want to find a newspaper or magazine article that helps you out. And then just general online searching. Um, so you may remember from past classes about evaluating information and maybe using Google appropriately. Um, using Google is great, but make sure that you're actually thinking uh, really, really hard about how to tailor your search. So what keywords are you using, et cetera. Okay. So that's how to create a research question. Now that uh, you maybe thought of something or it's getting your mind going, uh, you need to know about the parts of a research question. So we have the how, but what specifically goes into a research question? How do we know when it's complete? And the three parts that we've broken it down to here are a starter phrase, uh, your topics of interest, and making it make sense. So the topics of interest are essentially like what you're doing your background info on or background research on, and then the rest of them come in at various points of the research process. So this is an example here. So we have this phrase, what is the relationship between? We have what appears to be topics of interest, so parents' education level and pre-reading skills in children. And then the third level we have is what appears to be a fully formed research question. So we're going to go through what each of these pieces mean and how to put it all together into a research question. So first, we have our starter phrase. On the left-hand side of the slide, you're going to see some recommended starters. So these are ones that work well for the type of research question you're going to be using for your assignment. So those include should, to what extent, or at what point. Uh, on the right, you're going to see some other useful starters. So those include what is the relationship between or how does. So this is what you put at the beginning of your question in order to frame it. And that's going to help you later on because it's going to give you the method in, how, in which you're going to write. Part two are your topics of interest. Now, when you're figuring out what topics to write about, you need at least two. So your research question is going to have at least two specific topics that you're researching. And the purpose of that is you have three different purposes for your, for your research question. Either you're going to be writing a comparative type of, of paper, you're going to be finding a relationship between specific topics, or you're going to be interpreting the effect of one topic on another. Um, it is very difficult to do that with one topic. And if you only have one topic, then your paper becomes more informative rather than argumentative, uh, which is what we want to avoid. We want to be able to argue a point. So you need at least two topics uh, being specific. So if you can clearly identify what topics you're going to be writing out about, it's going to help you later on when you're actually doing your research, finding your sources, and searching through the libraries, databases, resources, and even Google Scholar. Uh, so being as specific as you can is going to be very helpful to you. An optional piece for your topic is to add some sort of 
either community or group uh, if you want to make it even more specific. And the two examples here are children. So uh, the community being like, what kind of people are we focusing on? Um, and then group could be residents of a specific area. So Canada or Alberta or Edmonton. Um, and that's to make your question a little bit more specific. However, keep in mind that the more specific you get, the harder it may be to find sources that help you answer your question. So there's a balance between broadness and specificity that you kind of want to be aware of or maintain. Two examples of topics of interest for our writer here are parents' education level and pre-reading skills in children. So this person has decided to write about two specific communities being parents and children and the specific topics being education of the parent and pre-reading skills in children. So how do children learn how to read? third part of creating a research question is making it make sense. So this is where you add things like verbs, connector words, all of those other little bits to make your question grammatically correct, in the right tense, and coherent. So at the end of your day, you're going to have a question that should make sense to not only you, but your reader, your instructor, when they actually get your paper at the end of the day. So with our writer here, they've decided to add the words a, ah, so between their starter, the relationship between, and they've also decided to put and the development of. So adding those two specific pieces makes this whole question make sense. So we have, going back to the beginning here, we have our starter phrase. We have our topics of interest, our two topics of interest. And now we have also um, connect your words and verbs, so an action word. So between all three pieces, putting them all together, you will create a research question that will allow you to complete your assignment and actually do research. Some things you want to avoid. As I was mentioning before, there are a couple of things you want to avoid when you're sitting down to think about your research question. Uh, one of them being accidentally creating an informative or a factual question. So like I said, your research question is meant to help you make an argument, uh, provide a point of view towards a specific question. So you want to uh, really, really avoid just giving a description of something, you want to say, I believe in this point of view on this question, and here is why. Second thing you want to avoid is making a, a question that's way too complicated or contains too many topics to be tackled in one paper. So you may think that adding maybe three or four or five different topics within the text of a question makes it more specific and you might think it might be better. However, like I said, making a question that's too specific backfires on you in the end because it prevents you from finding information. Um, also, if your question is way too complicated, it's going to be hard for your reader to understand what your goal is. Like, what is the point of your paper? What is the point of view you're trying to argue? So you want to try and keep it relatively straightforward with about two topics. Third is avoiding opinion or bias in your topics selection or question. Um, this comes into if your question is something that you have an opinion about and maybe you feel like you can write about it from a position of expertise or a position of knowing. But keep in mind, for every idea that you put forward, you have to provide evidence for it. And that's where your research comes in. So if you're writing about an idea and you don't have any evidence to support that idea, um, that means your question is a little bit opinionated. So you'll have to change it. So for every idea you put forward, 
you have to have a piece of evidence that proves your idea true or false, depending on the context of your question. And the last thing that you want to avoid is assuming that your instructor already knows a lot about your topic or that they have an opinion on it already. Um, your instructor is really interested in seeing how you interpret your research and how you write. So the more that you can write about it from a position of, I'm really interested in learning about this and I want to show you that I'm interested in, in it, um, the more, like the better your writing is going to be. So don't make the assumption that like, oh, this instructor has seen this paper so many times before. That's not really the point here. We wanna make sure that you're, you're getting the, the experience and the knowledge um, and that you're able to maybe provide a fresh point of view on the subject. Maybe it's an idea that your instructor has never considered before. You never know. All right, not seeing any questions so far. Um, I'm assuming we're all okay. So we're going to keep on going to the elements of a high, of a quality research question. So when we say a quality research question, we're generally talking about a high quality research question. So there are low quality and high quality. Um, we've broken them down into these eight elements and we're gonna explain them shortly. You do not have to memorize these at all. Um, these are going to be available to you after the class on your slides and in the recording. Um, but these are the things you should be aware of when you're writing your question. So these eight criteria are concise, complex, clear, focused, arguable, original, balanced, and interesting. So the first group that we have are our measurable elements um, or objectives. So these are the things that you like, it doesn't necessarily require too much thinking. Um, and they include concise, clear, and focused. So by concise, we mean that the wording of your question is precise. You have sat down and you've actually thought about, thought long and hard about what you want your question to say. It's specific to a few topics and the elements or the topics of your question don't contradict each other. Uh, clear, so it's easy to figure out what your question is asking without having to ask further questions about it. So one way to test this is to maybe write out your question and give it to someone in your household. And if they can understand what your question is saying without having to ask you like, what does this mean? I don't understand this then it's, it's clear and focused. So there is a payment for assignments. So you just have to make sure that whatever question it is you come up with, that you're able to answer it within the page limits of your particular assignment. A second set of objective elements include arguable. So again, you have to provide evidence uh, through your research to explain your point of view of your research question. And the particular ways in which you write or argue your chosen perspective is meant to persuade or sway the point of view of your reader. So if you have yourself and your friend, one of you can write about one point of view and one of you could write about the other point of view and you'll both be writing about the same question, but you'll have different points of view and different pieces of evidence. But you should, at the end of the day, be able to provide an argument either in favor or against. Uh, complex. Your research questions should be way more than just a yes or no question. So those are informative questions and what we want to avoid. And you want to be able to sit down and analyze an idea with your writing rather than just writing about a description of a perspective and original. So going back to um, academic integrity, et cetera. So your question is one that you sat down and thought of on your own, you worked on it yourself. You didn't just Google it and plagiarize it from elsewhere. Um, and if you want to know whether your question is original or not, you can just do a quick, a quick Google search of your question, see whether it's original. 
Okay, so those are all objective. Now we're moving on to subjective. So these are more of a personal judgment rather than object, the objective ones. So the two that we have here are interesting. So I can't tell you what's interesting to write about. What I want to write about is going to be much, much different than what you want to write about. Um, however, the point of this one is, is that you are genuinely interested in what you're writing about. If you want to know more about it, you're going to be more motivated to write about this particular topic. So pick something that you find interesting that you want to learn about. Um, and balanced. This one is going to come in um, when you're actually doing your research. So again, uh, that balance between specificity and broadness, so too many topics or too specific of topics versus too broad. So if your topics are too broad, you're just gonna find a lot of information, but none of it is going to be really useful. And if it's too narrow, you're not going to find a lot of things to be able to choose from. So this is more subjective because it's really dependent on what you are looking for in terms of your writing as the author. Um, but we are able to help if you are having trouble with finding, finding resources or balancing your question. All right, how to use these elements. So there is a way to use these in order to uh, judge your research question before you start writing or um, before you do um, any sort of work with it or research. So first step is to make a draft. If you don't have one specific idea, uh, you can use the multiple questions you may have in mind if you're having trouble deciding on just one. And then you're going to use um, the six different objective or measurable criteria to analyze it. And you just simply ask yourself, do they meet the criteria? Keep in mind that this is going to take some time. Um, it's not something that's going to happen like immediately upon deciding upon your research question. Um, it may take a, multiple drafts as well. So you may have to start off with one question and then rewrite certain parts and then analyze it again and rewrite all part of research. All right, so we're going to do an activity um, that essentially shows you how to do just that. So how do you analyze your research question to figure out whether it's high quality or low quality? So for this activity, uh, the instructions basically are, are to read both the low quality example and the high quality example. So there'll be two on the screen. You're gonna compare the two and you're gonna ask yourself what elements or criteria are not met in the low quality question. And on the screen, there's going to be numbers that correspond for those specific elements. So you're gonna type them into the chat uh, when you've made a, made a decision on them. So I'll give you an example first. So here is our example here. So our low quality research question is, how does reading books help children? And our high quality research question is, what is the relationship between a parent's education level and the development of pre-reading skills in children? Which if you remember from before, was the research question we came up with. So if I was thinking about how to change this low quality question into a higher quality question, I need to figure out like what specifically is it missing? And I thought to myself, well, this question doesn't appear to be very complex. So the answers are very easily found. There's not an argument to be made and you're just going to be writing a paper about why reading to children is important. Um, you're not expressing a point of view on the topic. And with the high quality research question here, it's asking you to actually put some thought into it and analyze two different topics in two specific communities and explain whether there is a relationship or not. So it can be argued on either side. Uh, you need evidence to be able to answer this question and it is clear in what the question is asking. So if I were to choose which of these five, 
So concise, complex, clear, focused, and arguable that this low quality question needs to work on. I would choose that it would, needs to be more complex, needs to be more clear, it needs to be more focused, and it needs to be arguable. So uh, I've changed the colors here to the darker green um, as, the, as the answers here. Does that make sense? Does everybody understand what we're doing? Just give me a yes in the chat if you, if you know, if, if you understand what we're doing. Okay, so Wade, you're gonna see, you'll you'll see what we're doing in a in a minute here. Okay, so here is our first question. So here is our low quality question: Why are social networking sites harmful? And our high quality question is: How are online users experiencing or addressing privacy issues on such social networking sites as Facebook and Twitter? So what is this low quality question missing? Uh, what elements are, is it missing in order to make it this higher quality question? So decide which numbers um, you are picking and then type those numbers into the chat. Okay, so for this one, for this one, uh, we picked two, three, and four. So it needed to be more complex, needed to be more clear, and it needs to be more focused. Um, so this question is, it's, it's concise enough. And you can make an, an argument as to why social networking sites are harmful, but it needs to mainly work on these three things in order to make it a little bit more of a higher quality question. Okay, here's the next one. So low quality is, what is the effect of global warming on the environment? And your high quality question is, to what extent is ongoing climate change affecting polar bears in the Arctic? Okay, so this particular low quality question uh, needs to be more complex, clear, focused, and arguable. So two, three, four, and five. All right. Next one, got a couple more here. Uh, how are doctors addressing diabetes in North America is the low quality example. And your high quality example is, what are common traits of those suffering from diabetes in North America? And how can these commonalities be used to aid the medical community in prevention of the disease? So what's missing in this low quality question here? Another 10 seconds, two, three, five, and we have an addition of four. Okay. Okay, two and five. All right. So this one, um, we thought it uh, needed to be more concise, more complex, clear, and arguable. So one, two, three, and five. Um, it's focused in the sense that. Um, we know it's talking about diabetes in North America. So there's a specific, one specific topic and one specific area, but it could work on the rest of these things. All right, here's another one. What was the Ottoman Empire? Is a low quality example. High quality, what has been the lasting impact of the Ottoman Empire on modern day European countries? All right, see a lot of ones here and some twos and fives. Okay. So this one, uh, we chose one, two, three, and five. So concise, complex, clear, and arguable. And I believe this is the last one. So low quality, how do tutors help with math classes? High quality. To what extent does Khan Academy support learning in high school math classes? Okay, so we've got three, five, and two people saying two and five. 
2, 5, and 3. Okay, but we'll finish with this first. So this one, uh, we decided that pretty much everything <laughs> needs to be worked on. Uh, so this first question, it's not very concise. It's not very complex. Uh, could be clear, uh, focused, and arguable. All right, so did anybody have questions about anything that we talked about today. So like I said, you can type them in the chat if you do. Um, for a summary, so when you're creating a research question, you want to make sure it's open-ended open and present something to be argued with proper evidence and thoughtful writing. Uh, your question should be able to meet the six objective or measurable criteria, so clear, concise, focused, original, complex, and arguable and that you yourself are interested in learning about your question through research. And having a clearly stated question is going to be helpful to you when it comes time to find sources for evidence and do your actual writing. All right. Uh, so once again, just letting you know about some of the services that are available to you. Um, go see our writing tutors. Maybe it's been a while since you've written a paper, or perhaps this is your first college level, first set of college level assignments. Uh, we have wonderful writing tutors that are available online. Uh, they can help you with understanding your assignments and planning out your writing. And they can also help you to, or teach you how to proofread your own work, but they are not an editing service. So they do not proofread, correct, double check, or edit your work for you. Um, the link is there below on the bottom of your screen. It is also included in your slides, and I'm sure it's in your Moodle as well. And if you have questions for us at any time, please get a hold of the library. Um, here is our chat. So on our website, library.norquest.ca, uh, usually top right hand of the corner under our help menu, there's an ask us button. Click on that. That is our chat. It is open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Friday. You can text us as well or email us, whichever one works for you. Uh, we also have office hours, uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday to Friday. So you're welcome to drop in to that as well. Uh, there is a librarian there every day. And the link is on our website and likely also in your Moodle. But if it's not, it's on our website. 